What is God's anointing for 2019? I'll tell you in a little while. I want to start out by teaching you on two ways that God speaks. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. And now I know in part, but then I shall know even also as I am known. Friends, the word darkly is the word is the word enigma. And many of you might not know what an enigma is, but an enigma is something that is mysterious, puzzling, complicated, or difficult to understand. So God speaks to us. That word see, for now we see through a glass, is the word blepo. As I've taught you, in the Greek, there's many words for see, but the word blepo is the word to glance. If a girl comes into a McDonald's wearing a red dress, you don't have to go to school to know that she's wearing a red dress. You, 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 put, down your, you put down your burger and you take a glance and it takes a second to say, oh, there's a girl with a red dress. That's the kind of scene that is depicted by glancing. And every spiritual gift, whether it's prophecy or healing or anything else, operates by spiritual glancing. I tell people, if you try to understand before you step out to minister, you'll never understand. You'll become an old person that dies in their seat. Because God will not give you the understanding first. He speaks by knowledge. And that knowledge is a glance. All you need to do is to glance in the Spirit. I told people, you want to learn how to hear God's voice? Then glance. The first word that comes to you, the first thought that comes to you, the first picture that comes to you, step out and do it. Step out and do it. So the word enigma tells us that what God speaks to us many times is going to be mysterious, puzzling, or difficult to understand. That's why we don't try to understand things before we minister. We step out on the glancing. And then the understanding comes. The principle of the way that God's voice speaks is knowledge first, understanding afterwards. And that's part of this anointing that we're going to talk about soon. The second way that God speaks is found in Luke 5, 24, 25, and 26. But the, this is Jesus. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up, he rose up before them and took up the that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. And that, was strange, and that word strange things is paradox. A paradox. And a paradox is something, is a statement or an event that seems to be contradictory. It seems to be opposite to what you think. It cannot be true, but also it cannot be false. And God speaks by paradoxes. He speaks in things that seem opposite. He speaks in, in things that you think, well, is this true? I don't know if it's true, but, but is it false? And I don't know if it's false. So then you have to step out into it. So remember, God speaks in enigmas, which are mysteries, Diff something mysterious, puzzling, or difficult to understand. That's why you don't step out in understanding. You step out in that knowledge, that glancing. And God speaks to us in paradoxes, things that seem so opposite that you say, well, this could be true or this could be false, but I'm going to step out and do it. And I tell people, step out and do it because if you've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless you live, but not you. So if you've been crucified with Christ, a dead man cannot speak because you've been crucified with him. So the voice inside of you must be the voice of God. So I tell people, remember that you're dead with Christ. So just step out and do it. Okay. The greatest problem with the church today is fear. 
there's a fear of stepping out. There's a, there's a fear of stepping out of the boat into the water. And people pray and say, God, they uh, tell me, pray that I will be delivered from fear. You know what? You can pray and pray and pray and pray and pray until you're blue in the face. But if you don't step into your fear, you'll never get free from fear for two reasons. Fear many times is a demon. And my wife says spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare is doing the opposite. If you have a hard time giving money, give a lot of money. If you have a, if, if you have a fear of something, step out into the fear. And you'll see how God backs you up. So what happens is we have a paralyzed and complacent church that, does, that never knows what to do. They never, they, you ask them, what is your calling? And I ask you, what is your calling? I don't know. What, what is your gifting? I don't know. Because there's this fear of, of, of making a mistake. So who cares if you make a mistake with God? I was a severe stutterer. I lost my speech at the age of four. At the age of 34, I could not say my wedding vows. And then God said to me, in the midst of the stuttering, he said, go and start teaching Bible conferences in Africa. Thank you very much. And that's when the stuttering started to, to go away. Number one, because a lot of the stuttering was caused by a spirit of confusion and fear. And number two, God sets you free as you go, not as you sit. A car that is, that, 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 that is not driving is, is hard to steer. The leper got healed as he went, not as he waited. So you have to go. And two scriptures here. Matthew 11, verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. My friend, that says the kingdom of heaven that we're trying to bring to church, that we're trying to bring to earth, is being suffers from violence. From violence. The enemy is attacking it. People are attacking it. And it says, the kingdom of heaven suffers from violence, and only the spiritually violent take it and make it their own. Now, I'm not talking about physical violence, but spiritually violent, a proactive, active life of stepping out, stepping out on the glance, stepping out on the enigma, stepping out on the paradox, on the things that are mysterious, on the things that you don't say, I don't know if it's true or I don't know if it's false. Step out on the glance. Step out in knowledge, not in understanding. This is the time to step out. The kingdom of heaven belongs to the spiritually violent, to the proactive, to the warriors. In the church, we have a lot of complacent and passive people. The most activity that we see are people raising up their hands to worship God. And even though that's fine and dandy, worshiping God without reaching out to your neighbor, without stepping out to minister in your spiritual gifts is not enough. Ephesians 4 verse 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. We are the body of Christ. Christ is the head. We are the body. We're his body here on earth. Let me ask you a question. If you have a physical body, look, my arms, my, my legs, my eyes, my teeth. Let's suppose if, if only the heart and the bladder and one ear functioned, what would happen to the body? It would die. Much of the body of Christ today only has an ear and, and a hand and the bladder that is functioning. It says, the body, the body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint, every joint, Christ's body is made out of joints, supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. The effectual working in the measure of every part, that means that every part of Christ's body must function at peak spiritual energy, peak spiritual performance. 
every single one of us is called to operate at our at our peak spiritual per performance every every one of us is called to discover what our spiritual gifts are and operate in them and, and bring God's glory to earth there's no bystanders there's no spectators in the body of Christ the church is full of spectators there's a few ministry everybody this is not the New Testament church this is a church system we need to get back to the every joint of Christ's body supplies you must supply you must work at your peak spiritual performance by the voice of the Holy Spirit so God's anointing for 2019 is the Nike anointing you know Nike the shoes Nike what does what does the Nike anointing say just do it just do it it's time it's time to stop debating on Facebook it's time time to stop arguing so much politicizing stuff you have a mission the harvest is white for the harvest just do it that's the anointing of 2019 step out into your gifts step out into the paradox step out into the enigma step out into the mysterious step out into what seems to be contradictory step out into what you don't think what you, you don't know if it's true or false until you step out but just do it my friends just do it if you're seeking an anointing say God give me the Nike anointing to just do it okay my friends have a happy Friday and we'll see you tomorrow